Hello, welcome to this channel Gain Java Knowledge and today in this video we will discuss what is collection and why we need collection in Java. So first we will discuss what is collection framework. Collection is a group of entity. So its definition will be if we want to represent a group of element into a single unit is known as collection. For example, we have a container and we want to store multiple elements into a single container. Then we should go for collection. But in Java, we have already arrays and we can use arrays also to store large number of elements into a single object. And here we can see we have a array also and in array we can store multiple elements by using single variable name and like this we can store multiple names into a single variables then why we need collection if we have already array because in array there are few disadvantages because array have fixed size for example if we want to create and declare the array then we must need to initialize the size at the time of its initialization so here i will create one string array of names so at the time of declaration or creation of array we must need to define the size of array so here if I will create like this, then it will show compile time error. So here I need to define the size. And here I have defined the size of this array is names 100. So here I can store only 100 names. If I want to store names at 0th index, then it will not show any error. And like this we can store names up to 99th index. But after 99th index if I will store to I will try to store another name then it will show error. That is index out of bound exception. Means I can store only 100 names in this array. If we will try to add at 100th index name then it will show out of bound index exception at 100 index and here now i will run this one and here we can see java dot length array index out of bound exception 100 so we can just store 100 names and the index will be from 0 to 99 and the another disadvantage of array is we can store here only in string values if you want if i want to store some integer value in this array then it will show compile time error if i want to store integer value then it will not able to store cannot convert from int to string because this array only accept string values so we must need to add string values only it means array have fixed size and array can store only homogeneous value homogeneous means only single type of object same type of objects and these are the limitations of arrays array is an indexed collection of fixed number of homogeneous data elements this is the definition and once we have created array then its size will be fixed then there is no chance to increasing or decreasing the size based on our requirement Hence, to use the array concept, compulsory we should know the size in advance, which may not possible always. And arrays can hold only homogeneous data elements, means only string type of object can store by string of array. If this is integer array, then it can store only integer elements. So, array can store only homogeneous data element. And arrays concept are not built on any data structure. Hence, there is no ready-made function are available for array if you want to perform any action like reverse the order and in ascending descending order of array then we must need to write the code there is no predefined api or function provided by 
arrays. So to overcome this advantage of arrays, collection framework came into picture. And these are the advantages of collection over arrays. In collection are growable in nature. Hence, based on our requirement, we can increase or decrease the size. And we saw in arrays there is a fixed size of array. Once we have declared, then we cannot increase or decrease according to our requirement. But in collection, it is growable. And collection can hold both homogeneous and heterogeneous elements. In array, we can store only homogeneous element. But in collection, we can store both homogeneous and heterogeneous elements. And every collection class is implemented based on some data structure. So here ready-made method support is available. If you want to reverse and want to ascending or descending order of elements, then we can use its predefined functions. So here we can see in collection that is growable in nature. For example, here I have created one collection class. Here I am using list. So at the time of declaration, or creation of list object there is no need to define the size it is growable and here I will use java.util list now I can store any number of elements like al.add any name I can store here current so here no size issue it will automatically growable when it's because array list have default size is 16 when it will reach up to this then it will grow and Rohit and we can also store here heterogeneous data also supported by collection so if I want to store integer element then it is also possible here so here if I will add 10 it will not show any compile time error so array supports heterogeneous and homogeneous both data so to overcome the disadvantage of arrays collection came into picture now we will discuss what is collection framework what is collection and what is collection framework collection framework contains list of interfaces and there are nine key interfaces supported by collection framework these are the nine root key interfaces and this is the list of interfaces nine key interfaces of collection framework first one is collection list set sorted set navigable set queue map sorted map navigable map because our collection framework is divided into two parts one is java.util collection and second is java.util map interface and these are the main nine key interfaces that are in orange color first one is collection that is a root interface of all interfaces and classes and this is the set sorted set navigable set queue list and in map sorted map navigable map these are the nine key interfaces of collection framework so first what we will discuss we will start from collection interface so what is collection interface and when we need to use collection interface if we want to store or represent a group of element into a single unit then we should go for collection and in general the collection interface is the root interface for all the collection framework and collection interfaces defines the most common methods which can be applicable for any collection object and in general collection interface is considered as a root interface for collection framework so it is a root of all the interfaces and classes methods which are available here in collection interface by default will be available in each and every class or interface the second one is list interface when we need to use list interface it is the child interface of collection and if we want to represent a group of individual objects where insertion order is preserved and duplicate elements are allowed then we should go for list interface so this is the definition 
and if we want to store only duplicate elements then we can go for list interface and insertion order will be preserved in which order we will insert the element in the same order we can get the element and these are the classes implemented vector class array list link list and stack these four classes have implemented list interface so here we can see list interface can store duplicate elements also if i want to store this name again then it is possible so here now i will print names and here it's printing here we need to print al that is list so here we can see in the list duplicate names are allowed and in which order we have added the element first we insert karan second rohit third rohit and same order will be here karan is the first in zeroth index and this one is the first and this one in the second index so insertion order is also preserved and duplicate names are also allowed and the next one is set interface set interface is also the child interface of collection and if we want to represent a group of individual objects where duplicates are not allowed and insertion order is also not allowed then we should go for set interface and these are the classes that implementing set interface are hash set linked hash set sorted set navigable set and tree set that we will discuss separately each and every interface and class in the next videos so today we are going to just discuss the overview so set interface is mainly used to store duplicate objects if we want if we don't want to store duplicates then we go for set interface and this is the definition for set if we want to represent a group of individual objects where insertion order is not preserved and duplicates are not allowed then we should go for set and here we can see first we have used list now we will use here set and here we will use the implementation class for this set that is hash set because we cannot create the object for interface so now if i will print this object value then we will see the output duplicates are not allowed in set and insertion order will be anything because insertion order is not preserved in set so here the output is karan rohit because set not allow the duplicate values so we can use set if we don't want to add duplicates and the next one is next is sorted set and it is a child interface of the set interface and if we want to represent a group of objects according to some sorting order then we should go for sorted sets and duplicates are not allowed because it is a child interface of set and this is the definition for sorted set if you want to represent a group of individuals object according to some sorting order then we should go for sorted set and duplicates are not allowed in sorted set and this one with a number 4 and the next one is navigable set that is navigable set and it is a child interface of sorted set and it is used to provide several methods for navigation purpose that we will discuss in the next video what functions that we need to use to provide navigation and the classes that implements navigable interset is also tree set and the navigable functions are used to get first element from the list and last element also so that function we will discuss in next video and the next one is that is queue interface and it is the child interface of collection interface and if we want to represent a group of objects prior to processing then we should go for queue because usually queue follow first in first out algorithm for example in which order we will add the email ids in the same order we want to send the emails then we should go for queue concept and this is the definition for queue 
and the next one is map so here we have covered the overview of the collection java.util collection interface and it includes set sorted set navigable set list and queue interfaces and these are the implementation classes that are in green that we will discuss later so these all are the interfaces that is meant for representing a group of individual objects but why we need map if we want to store a group of object as a in the form of queue value pairs then we should go for map so map is used if we want to store the group of object in the form of queue value pairs and here keys and value both will be the object so here we can see we will create one map object map is used to store the object in the form of key value pair so key will be string and object will be string key value pair and here any when a is equal to here we can give any name new here we will use its implementation class to create the object So here this is object of map that is used to store the object in the form of key value pair and here we will use put function to store here roll number 1 name is current like this we can use the map if you want to store the object in the form of key value pair so here roll number 2 and here we can see this is a list object that is the child interface of collection and this this is the map object so when we should go for map and when we should go for list that we know and this is the definition for map and inside map duplicate keys are not allowed but values can be duplicate so here we can see in the map if i want to store duplicate key like we have already added row number 1 if i want to again store a row number 1 then it will not allow so now i will run here we can see the output is one is current second is rohit and third one is duplicate so it's not allowed due to its duplicate key value if i will change the key then it will allow because keys are not allowed duplicate keys are not allowed but when you value can be duplicate so here we can see one is current second row third current is allowed so duplicate keys are not allowed but values can be duplicate and the next one is sorted map so the next one is sorted map and if we want to represent a group of object as a key value pairs according to some sorting order then we should go for sorted map as its name mentioned sorted map so it will be represent the object in some sorted order but the sorting order will be decided only based on the key values so the sorting order will be decided based on its keys only 1 2 3 that is the keys not based on its value and this is the definition for sorted map and the next one is navigable map and navigable map is the child interface of sorted map and it also provides some navigation functions that we can use so that we will discuss later in next videos and this was the complete overview of collection framework why we need to use collection framework and what was the advantages of arrays and then collection came into picture so in the next video we will discuss one by one each interface and its implementation classes in this video we will discuss what is collection interface in collection framework as we know collection interface is the root interface
in all collection framework and in our previous video we have already discussed what is collection and why we need collection and we have discussed overview about nine key interfaces of collection framework so today we will start from first that is collection interface and we will discuss in depth about each and every interface and its implemented classes so okay let's start with collection interface and when we need to use collection interface if we want to represent a group of element into a single unit then we should go for collection and in general collection interface is the root interface of all collection framework so here we can see it is the root interface of all collection framework and collection interface defines the most common methods which can be applied for any collection object so these are the following methods that is present in collection interface first one is boolean add and boolean add all object and boolean remove remove all retain all and clear is empty that is used to check the object is empty and size as the name specify its functionality of each and every methods so these are the root interface and these are the common methods for all collection objects okay and the collection interface is about this only and in the next part we will discuss about list interface and it's all implemented classes that we will discuss in next part this video we will discuss about what is list interface and we'll also discuss about all implementation classes of list interface these classes are vector array list linked list and stack so today in this video we will cover this one so okay let's start discuss about list interface as we know list it is the child interface of collection and if we want to represent a group of individual object where insertion order is preserved and duplicates are allowed then we should go for list interface and here insertion order will be preserved by means of index and here in the list index play very important role and these are the methods provided by list interface first one is add and we can add element based on its index value and add all remove get set index of last index of and we will use all the methods so first we will create one program and we will create the list interface object by using its implementation class that is array list then we will use all this function so now we will discuss first implementation class of interfaces that is array list class so first we will discuss about array list then we will use these all the functions that is provided by list interface and we'll show the output and these are the four implementation classes that are implementing the list interface first one is array list linked list vector and stack so first we will discuss about array list the underlying data structure for array list is resizable array and the insertion order is preserved in array list and duplicate objects are also allowed and heterogeneous object are also allowed and and null insertion is also possible in array list and these are the three constructors used by array list class first one is array list al is equal to new array list that is with zero parameters and it is used to create an empty array list object with its default initial capacity is 10 and once the array list reaches its maximum capacity then a new array list object will be created and the formula is new capacity is equal to current capacity into 3 by 2 plus 1 and the second is array list 
array list al is equal to new array list that is with initial capacity so this constructor is used to create an empty array list object with the specified initial capacity we can specify any capacity to this array list object and the third one is array list al is equal to new array list collection c this constructor is used to create an equivalent array list object for the given collection object okay let's start to create one program and we will use these all constructors and the functions provided by array list class this we will use in our program okay so first i will open eclipse <coughs> so here i have created one class that is test class and inside test class we have declared one method that is main method so now what i will do here i will create one object of array list and we'll use all the functions and its constructor so for first i will use its first constructor that is without any parameter and we'll check its default capacity of array list object and there is no direct way to check the capacity of array list object so what we will do here we will use its all methods that we have shown here so we will use add method add all remove get set index of and last index of so first what we will do we will add one object into our array list object so here we will add the object into object so here we will add some name current and now we can check the size of this object so here the size will be one because we have added one object into our array list object and array list have already implemented two string method to return its content directly in the following format and as we know we can store heterogeneous object in our array list so here we can add also integer value is also heterogeneous means we can add different type of objects like integer string anything we can add so now i will run this so here we can see its size is 2 and here i will print array list and here we can see the value of array list object current and 10 because array list support heterogeneous data storage and insertion order will be preserved and duplicate will be allowed in array list so here i can add current again then it will allow to add the duplicate name and insertion order will be same first will be the current second current then 10 so here insertion order is preserved and duplicates allowed heterogeneous object allowed and null insertion is also possible so we can also add null value so here if i will add l dot add null then it will not show any compile time error or any other error it will run just like a simple program so here we can see null is also allowed so we can also add null value like this we can use other methods add int index object o and remove function we can also use if we want to remove any value from this object then we can use al dot remove so here we need to just pass the index value from which index we want to remove so if we want to remove from 0th index then it will remove first current that will be removed so here we can see only single current is printed on console so this was the output like this we can use other functions to get the object based on its index value and we can set the object based on its index value here we need to pass the index number and here we need to pass the value of object 
like this we can use all the functions and array list class also implements random access interface so that any random element we can access with same speed and the next one that we will discuss is linked list and in linked list the underlying data structure is double linked list and in linked list insertion order is also preserved and duplicate objects are allowed and we can store heterogeneous object and null insertion is also possible so here everything is like linked list but here internally data structure that is used is double linked list and linked list in also implemented serializable and clonable interface but linked list not implemented random access interface so it is a worst choice if we want to get retrieve the object from list and these are the two constructors used by linked list first one is used to create an empty linked list object and second one is used for inter conversion between objects if we want to convert array list into linked list then we can use this constructor and these are the methods that is specific to linked list that is add first add last remove first remove last get first and get last so here now i will go here and we'll create one linked list object linked list object and here if you want to get first element from this list then we can use the function add get first so no need to specify any index we can directly get the first object that is al dot get first so it will return value that is current so now i will run so here we can see the output on console current that is the output so here we are getting first element from the linked list object and if we want to get the last object then we can use its function al dot get last so it will return the last one that is null and like this we can use its other function remove first if we want to remove first object and remove last if we want to remove the last object from the linked list then we can use these functions also this is used for to add first this one will be used to add last object okay then the next what we will discuss that is so after linked list third one is vector vector class is also implementing list interface array list and vectors both are the same option so if we are using vectors then it will perform the same operation like the underlying data structure is also same for vector and array list for both and insertion order is also preserved in vector and duplicate objects are allowed heterogeneous objects are also allowed and null insertion is also possible and then what are the difference between vector and array list inside vector each method is synchronized so it provide thread safety but in array list this does not provide any thread safety so if we want to use thread safety then we can use vector otherwise we can go for array list and the both the classes have implemented the same interfaces like serializable clonable and random access interface so both are good if we want to fetch the data from any object if our frequent operation is retrieval then we need to go for this and these are the four constructors provided by vector class first one is vector v is equal to new vector this is used to create an empty vector object with the default initial capacity will be 10 and once the vector reach its maximum capacity a new vector object will be created with double capacity for example if its default capacity is 10 and when it will be reach up to 10 then its next capacity will be 10 multiplied by 2 is equal to 20 so 
the next constructor is vector v is equal to new vector that is used to define the capacity of vector object and the next one is vector is equal to new vector initial capacity and we can also add incremental capacity means when the vector reaches up to its maximum capacity then it will provide the increment that we will provide here for example its default capacity is 10 that we have defined here and incremental capacity we have defined 5 when it reaches up to 10 then automatically its capacity will be increased by 5 means new capacity will be 15 and then 20 25 like this will be the increment and the next one is vector v is equal to new vector collection c if we want to convert any collection object into our vector then we can use this constructor and these are the methods that is specific to vector class add element means we can add element by using this function and remove element at if we want to remove the element from any index we can provide the index value and can remove the element from the vector and this is used to remove the all elements and elements at if we want to check at fifth index which object is available then we can use this function and here we will create vector object we can also use the same methods add function that is provided by collection that is the root interface and we can also use these methods are specific to link list so these are showing error now because we are using here vector class not linked list class so here i will call the function that is add remove all elements so here i will just call single function al dot remove all elements so now all elements will be removed from the vector object so it will not print just removing and what will be the size after removing all elements from vector object its size will be 0 and list and vector object will be empty so here we can see size is 0 and object is empty and the next one is stack and stack it is the child class of vector class it is a child class of vector class stack contains only one constructor that is zero parameterized constructor so we can create just empty stack object and these are the methods that is specific to stack class and this is object push function if we want to insert an object into the stack then we can use push and object pop is used to remove and return the top of the stack and the next one is peak that is used to return the top of the stack object and the next one is empty return the true when stack is empty otherwise false and the next one is int search it will use to return the offset from the top of the stack if the object is available if object is not available then it will always return minus one so here now what we will do here we will create one object of stack stack now here we will remove this one so here we will use stacks related functions like st dot st dot add st dot push function that is used to insert the object so here i will add one name here we can print this stack value stack always follow leaf all last in first out if you want to to use the order last in first out then we can use stack now i will run this and here what we will do the out we will see the output on the console current current so here we have printed two times now i will remove this one and the second function is pop that is used to remove 
and return the top of the stack so it will remove the object if i will call st.pop so it will remove the object from the top but we have only single object so it will remove this one and the stack object will be empty print so here we can see it just removed the top of the stack and if i will print here now it will remove and print the object that these have removed so here stack have removed current so here we can see on the control the object value is printed and the next one is peak that is used to return the top of the stack so here we will use peak function st dot peak it will just remove and not print the value and now our object will be empty because it will remove the object from the top it will not remove it will just get the object from the top of the stack so stp is used to get the object from the top the next one is used to check the empty object here if the object is empty then it will return true otherwise it will return false now here our object contains one value so it's returning false and the last one is int search so here i will search for the object into stack stack dot search and here i will pass the value that is current if it is available then it will return its index so here what it will do here we need to print it that is st dot search and here it's printing the index is 1 if the object is not available and then it will always return minus 1 here it's returning the value that is minus 1 okay so we have covered all the implementation classes for list interface and today in this video we will discuss about what is set interface and we'll also discuss about its implementation classes that is hash set linked hash set sorted set and navigable set is also interface and tree set is its implementation class so in this video we will cover this one so okay let's start from what is set interface as we have discussed in its overview video that set is child interface of collection interface so if we want to represent a group of individual objects where insertion order is not preserved and duplicates are not allowed then we should go for set and set interface does not contain any method and we have to use only collection interface methods so now we will start discuss about its implementation classes so we will start from hash set so we will start from hash set the underlying data structure used by hash set is hash table and duplicate objects are not allowed in set interface so it will also not allowed in hash set and if we are trying to add duplicate objects we won't get any compile time error or run time exception it simply return the false and insertion order is also not preserved and all the objects are inserted according to the hash code value of the object and hash set also support to the heterogeneous objects and null insertion is possible but it only once because duplicates are not allowed and hash set implements serializable and clonable interface and hash set also support four types of constructors so the first constructor that is hash set h is equal to new hash set zero parameterized it will use to create an empty hash set object 
with the default initial capacity is 16 and the default fill ratio value is 0 0.75 and the second one is hash set h is equal to new hash set with int initial capacity and this one is used to create an empty hash set object with the specified initial capacity and the default ratio will be same that is 0 0.75 and the third one is hash set h is equal to new hash set with int initial capacity and float fill ratio we can modify the fill ratio also and when the hash set object will contain its initial capacity value and it will reach up to its fill ratio then it will increase the its size because it is growable and the next one is hash set h is equal to new hash set collection of c if you want to convert any collection object into hash set then we can use this constructor and what is the fill ratio fill ratio is a value when after completing the specified ratio then only a new hash set object will be created that particular ratio is called as fill ratio or we can also say load factor and the default fill ratio value is 0 0.75 and we can customize the fill ratio value for hash set object by using this constructor now we will go to eclipse and we will create one hash set object and we will use its functions as we know hash set does not provide any any methods and it will use the functions provided by collection interface that is a root interface here i will create one hash set object set s is equal to names is equal to new hash set that is the implementation class for sent interface and here i will add few names in this list in this set so here i will use names and call add function that is provided by collection interface and here as we know duplicates are not allowed in hash set if you will try to add the duplicate names then it will not throw any compile time error or runtime error it will just return the false value so here we will print names then it will return only one name and here we can check console here we can see the name that is current because duplicates are not allowed and if we want to try if we try to print this value then here it will just return the false because this name is already in the set so now i will run this again and here we can see false it was not added so it's returning false and if i will try to print here then here it will return true because this object will be added into our set and first it was added so it it's returning true and in second time this was not added so it's returning false and in the output we get single time only duplicate objects are not allowed and if we want to add null value then it also allowed but only one time so here i will call add function and will insert null and null is also allowed only once because duplicates are not supported by set and the insertion order is also not preserved in set because first time we added name current and second was null but here in output we can see null was in first order and current on second so insertion order is not preserved by set and the next one is next implementation class of set interface is linked hash set so now we will discuss about linked hash set linked hash set is the child class of hash set and it is exactly same as hash set but there are few differences between both linked hash set and the hash set and the main difference is that the data structure used by hash set is hash table and linked hash set is using the data structure is combination of hash table plus linked list and insertion order is not preserved in hash set but if we are using linked hash set 
then the insertion order will be preserved so here we can see here insertion order is not preserved but if we will use here linked hash set then we can see the insertion order will be preserved so here output will be first current and second is name because linked hash set support preservation order so these are the two differences between hash set and linked hash set and other things are same and the next one is sorted set and sorted set is the child interface of set interface and if you want to represent a group of individual objects according to some sorting order then we should go for sorted sets and sorted set interface have some specific methods that are six and these are the six method that is specific to sorted set first one is object first that will return the first element of sorted set and object last is used to return the last element of sorted set and the third function is it will return sorted set object and its function name is hash set so it will return the sorted set whose elements are less than this object and the next one is tail set this will return the sorted set whose elements are greater than or equal to the object and the next one is sorted set subset and this will return the sorted set whose elements are greater than this object and less than object 2 so last one is comparator okay now we will create one program and we'll use these methods of sorted set interface so here i will create one sorted set sorted set <coughs> sorted set is a interface so we need to create the object for its implementation classes and its implementation class is tree set that we can see here the implementation classes for sorted set is tree set this class has implemented navigable set and the sorted set interface so here i will add few elements like roll numbers roll numbers and here i will add 10 numbers so here i have added 10 numbers that is from 1 to 10 and the default sorting order will be in ascending order so now i will run this so here we can see the sorting order is preserved that is ascending order 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 these are the methods that we will use now so first we will use object first and if here i will print the value roll numbers dot first then it will return first object that is one so here the output will be that is one and now i will get the last object by using last method so here i will just copy this one and here i will call sorted set last function So here we can see first one is 1 and last is 10 and the next function is hash set and hash set will return the sorted set whose elements are less than the object so it will return the objects if i am passing the 5 then it will return the objects less than 5 that is 1 2 3 4 so if here i will use hash set function then it will print its value that is less than the object hash set function so here i will call roll numbers 
dot headset so it's not allowing that is headset not a headset function so here we need to change that is headset function headset function is here so now i will run this one or here we need to pass the value so here i will pass 5 and here we can see the headset is returning the value that is less than from this object 1 2 3 4 and like this we can use tail set function and tail set function what it will return this function will return the sorted set whose elements are greater than or equal to this if i will pass 5 by using tail set then it will return value 5 6 7 8 9 10 so here i will call this function that is tail set so what will do it will return the value that are greater than or equal to this object so here we can see the output 5 6 7 8 9 10 that is returned by tail set function and the next one is subset so the subset will be returns the sorted set whose elements are greater than this object and less than this object so here if i will call subset function that is subset so here i will pass two objects subset and here i will pass one so it will return the value equal to one or greater than one but less than 10 but it will not include 10 but if it will include one so it will print value from one to nine now i will run here we can see the subset will returning value one to nine and the next one is navigable set Navigable set is also an interface and it is the child interface for tree set Sorry, it is the child interface for sorted set and the implementation class for navigable set is tree set and Navigable set also provides several method for navigation and this is the definition for navigable set It is the child interface of sorted set to provide several methods for navigation purpose and these are the methods provided by navigable set first one is ceiling it will return the lowest element from this object and higher function that is used to return the lowest element from this element value and floor e it returns the highest element which is less than or equal to this and the next function is pole first the pole first is remove and return the first element and pole last is also used to remove and return the last element and descending set is used to return the sorted set in reverse order so now we will use these all functions and will create one program so here i will create the object for tree set that is the implementation class for navigable set and here i have added 10 values that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so now what i will do so here i will call each function one by one so first i will call ceiling function and ceiling function is used to return the lowest elements so here i will call roll numbers dot dot ceiling and here i will pass the value is 5 and now if i will run this here we can see the output is just 5 and the next function is higher that will also use the higher element from this element if it will mean the points then here it will call higher higher so here the value will be same for ceiling or higher and 
and here the value for higher is 6 and here we can see the higher function is returning the lowest element which is so here I have called each and every function that is ceiling second is higher and third is floor and fourth one is lower then pole first pole last and descending set so now I will run this so here we will see the output and here we can see the ceiling is returning the value is 5 and higher is returning value 6 and floor is returning the value 5 and lower is 4 and pole first is used to remove and return the first element and pole last is used to remove and return the last element so after removing the elements we have removed these two elements first one and last one so now our descending order set is like this if you want to convert ascending into descending order then we can use descending set function of navigable set interface like this this function we can also use for string values here we have used only integer values so the next one is that we need to discuss is tree set so this is a tree set and the balance the underlying data structure that is used for tree set is balanced tree and duplicates are not allowed if we are using tree set and insertion order is also not preserved because objects will be inserted according to some sorting order and heterogeneous objects are not allowed if we are using tree set then heterogeneous objects are not allowed otherwise we will get class cast exception and null insertion is also not possible and tree set also implementing serializable and clonable interface but not implementing random access interface and all objects will be inserted in tree set will be according to some sorting order and it may be default natural sorting order or we can provide our own customized sorting order also and these are the constructors that are provided by tree set the first one is tree set t is equal to new tree set and it is used to create an empty tree set object where the sorting order is default natural sorting order if we will use this one and tree set t is equal to new tree set comparator of c then it is used to create an empty tree set object where the sorting order is customized sorting order and specified by the comparator object and the third one is tree set t is equal to new tree set if we want to convert our collection object into tree set then we can use this constructor and the fourth one is tree set t is equal to new tree set sorted set c if we want to convert sorted set into tree set object then we will use this constructor here we can see null insertion is also not possible in tree set. If it is empty and we are trying to insert null then it will also throw null pointer exception. Ok let's create one program and we will see here. Ok first I have created one tree set object here and I will remove this one from here. now here i have added five objects one two three four five so if i will run then it will provide default natural sorting order that is one two five so here we can see default natural sorting order if we are using this constructor that is zero parameterized constructor and in tree set we can add only heterogeneous object and if i will try to add homogeneous object like if i will add yeah, here roll numbers dot add any string object now I will run this one and here we can see that will rise class cast exception that is the class cast exception java dot lang integer cannot be cast to java dot lang string because tree set does not support heterogeneous object so we can add only homogeneous object 
in tree set and null is also not allowed if i will try to add null value or null object then it will throw null pointer exception so here we can see it's throwing null pointer exception and if i will try to add it first then also it will throw null pointer exception so here we can see null is also not allowed in tree set so this was about set interface and its implementation classes so now we have covered set interface and its all implementation classes and in previous video we have also covered list interface and its implementation classes and in the next video we will cover queue and its implementation classes and today in this video we will discuss about what is queue interface in collection framework and in our previous video we have already discussed about list interface and its implementation classes set interface and all its implementation classes and now to this video we will discuss about queue interface and its implementation classes so what is queue interface and it is the child interface of collection and if we want to represent a group of individual object prior to processing then we should go for queue and queue follow the first in first out algorithm and here we can see one example in which order we add the email ids in the same order we want to send the emails then we should go for queue concept this like this if you want to send the message to 100 students at a same time then first we will add the 100 students in the queue then we will send a message as we know the queue follow first in first order algorithm that is linked list based implementation and these are the implementation classes for queue interfaces that is array DQ, linked list and third one is priority queue and these are the methods of queue interface first one is boolean offer object o this function is used to add an object to the queue and the second one is object pole that is used to remove and return the head element of the queue if the queue is empty then it will get return null value and the remove function is also used to remove and return head element of the queue but if the queue is empty then this method will rise an exception no such element exception will be raised here and the fourth one is object peak and this method will be used to return head element of the queue without removing so it will also return the head element from the queue but it will not remove from the queue if queue is empty then this method will also return null and the fifth one is object element it returns the head element of the queue and if queue is empty then it will raise exception saying no such element exception and these are the implementation classes for queue interface now we will create one program and use the functions of queue interface so here i will create queue interface object by using its implementation class so here i will name as q1 is equal to new linked list that is the implementation class used for queue interface and here i will add few elements by using its method that is offer offer is used to add the object so here i will add one object that is any name we can add so here i will add 10 elements like this q1 dot this so here I am using for each loop to insert 10 elements into our queue. I will be up to 10 and I will be 
increment it by one by one so here what we'll do q1 dot offer a function i will use here that will add all the objects into this queue one by one so now here i will just print this queue that is q1 And here we can see the element in sorting order 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because we are using here linked list as an implementation class for this queue interface. And if here we will use the other function of this interface that is poll method that is used to remove and return the head element of the queue. So here I will use q1 dot poll and here I will print this object so here it's returning the head element of the queue and also removed this element so now queue will be so if I will print Q value here now again, now we can see the output. One element has removed, that is the top element of this Q has removed. And the next function is remove is also used to remove and return the head element of the Q. So like this we can use each and every function and can see the output. So now we will see with its next implementation class that is priority queue. So the priority queue is the implementation class for queue interface and this class provides the functionality of the heap data structure. And unlike normal queues, the priority queues element will be retrieved in sorted order. And here we can see in which order we will add the element in the same order we will get the element. But if we are using priority queue, then we will get the element in sorted order. So here we can see the example for priority queue. Here we have used the implementation class as linked list. And here we will use priority queue. Priority queue. So here we are using priority queue. Now I will remove this one and here we will just add two elements q1 dot add 4 and here we will see the difference between both if we are using linked list as implementation class or we are using priority queue as the implementation class 2 and same element I will add here in the priority queue and here what will be the output so here both queue have the same name so here I will named as q2 and here i will add element into q2 and here we will print the q2 and here i will call the same function that is poll function that is used to remove the head element from the q and here we can see the output and now i will run this application and here we can see the difference between both linked list implementation class of queue and the second one is priority queue and in linked list we can see in which order we have added the elements in the same order we are printing the elements on console and when we have used poll function it will remove the head element from the queue so head element was 4 so it has removed the 4 then the next two elements are left in the queue that is 2 and 10 but if we are using priority queue then the smallest element will be the 
head element in the queue because if we are fetching the data from priority queue then it will be in the sorted order here we can see priority queue elements are retrieved in sorted order so here the elements will be removed at the top will be sorted and after removing this element the next top next top element will be the smallest element from the queue so here what is the smallest element the smallest element is 4 so this is the new queue structure so these are the difference between both linked list and priority queue implementation classes okay then we have covered queue is also and in the next video what we will cover we will cover its map interface and its implementation classes so in the next video we will cover all these one today in this video we will discuss about what is map interface and its implementation classes and in this video we will cover map interface its implementation class hash map linked hash map identity hash map weak hash map and we'll also cover its interface sorted map navigable map and tree map and hash table and properties class this we will cover in this video so okay let's start with its root interface that is map map is not the child interface of collection interface if you want to represent a group of objects as key value pair then we should go for map and here both the key and values are object and duplicate keys are not allowed in map but value can be duplicate and here we have created one map object and here we can see the key is one and value is current and in the second object key two value rohit like this we have added three object in map object now when we should go for collection and when we should go for map interface if we want to represent group of individual objects then we should go for collection if we want to represent group of object as key value pair then we should go for map interface because map store the object in the form of key value pairs and each object here is one entry and these are the methods of map interface first one is object put and this method is used to add the key value pair to the map if the specified key is already available then old value will be replaced with the new value and the next one is put all that is used to add a group of key value pairs and the third one is object get if you want to get any object based on its key then we can use this function and the next one is remove that is used to remove the object and next one is used to check contains key if map object this key then it will return true otherwise false like this same function contains value if we want to check the map object contains this value then here we will pass the value if it contains that value then it will return true otherwise it will return false and the next one is int size that is used to check the size of map object and boolean is empty if the map is empty then it will return true otherwise false and this function is used to clear the map object and the next one is key set function that is used to get the all keys value from our map object and values function is used to get all the values from our map object and the next one is entry set that is used to get all entry in the form of set now we will use these all functions in one program okay let's start to create one program so here i will open eclipse but before creating this program first we need to discuss about its implementation class that is hash map then we will use the hash map as a implementation class while creating map object so here now we will discuss about hash map what is hash map the underlying data structure used in hash map is hash table and heterogeneous objects are allowed for both the keys and values and duplicate keys are not allowed in hash map but values can be duplicate 
and insertion order is also not preserved because in hash map we use hash code value of the keys to store the objects and null is also allowed but only once and null values are allowed any number of times and these are the points to be noted and these are the constructors of hash map first one is hash map m is equal to new hash map and it creates an empty hash map object with default initial capacity level is 16 and its default fill ratio will be 0 0.75 and the second one is hash map map is equal to new hash map int initial capacity so here we can provide our own manual initial capacity to the map object and third one is if we want to define our own initial capacity and we also want to define our custom fill ratio then we can use this constructor and the next one is hash map map is equal to new hash map this is used to convert any map object into hash map now we will create one program and will use these functions in our hash map so here i will create one map object by using new hash map implementation class of map interface so here the key value will be like string comma string so key is string and value will also string so here i will put the object by using put function map put Here we will add its first name that is current and last name here that is ready. Like this we will add multiple objects. So here I have added three names. Now just I will run this application and we will see the output run as java application and here we can see the output on the console kernel ready bankdash ready and vivek ready if i will try to add one more object with the same key like this if i am using this object and here i am using the same key but with some different value then what will here then this key this object will be updated now i will run this again so first here I will print this now here we will see the output first one was current ready Venkatesh ready Vivek ready but after updating the object current ready Venkatesh ready and Vivek Sharma this is the output because if we are using the same key adding again then it will update and override the previous object and if we want to get all the key sets then we can use the function that is key set if we want to just get the first one keys current vivek at venkatesh these three want to get then we can use key set function of map map dot key set so here what it will return it will return the set of keys so now i will just print this that is key set and here we can see all keys in the one group if i want to get all values like this ready ready and sharma then i can use the function that is map dot values it will return all the values from our map object so here it will assign the statement now i just print the values now here we can see all values in a one group so if we want to just get the keys then we can use key set function if we want only values then we can use values function 
like this we can use other functions also contains value contains key so here if i will use contains key function map dot contains key here i will pass one key that is current if it is available then it will return true otherwise false so current key is available so it is returning the true but if i will put some other name that is rohit and this is not available so what will be the output here it will return false because this key is not available like this we can use its other functions also and the next one one that we will discuss is linked hash map linked hash map is the child class of hash map and it is exactly same as hash map but there are few differences between both and these are the differences between both hash map and linked hash map hash map internally used hash table data structure whereas linked hash map internally using hash table and linked list so insertion order is preserved in linked hash map but in hash map insertion order is not preserved because their object will be inserted based on its hash code value of the key and the next one is identity hash map identity hash map internally uses the equal to equal to operator to identify the duplicate keys and identity hash map it is exactly same as hash map except the following difference in the case of hash map to identify the duplicate keys jvm always uses dot equals method which is mostly meant for content comparison but if we want to use equal to equal to operator instead of dict equals method to identify the duplicate keys then we should go for identity hash map now we will create one program and we'll see the difference between hash map and identity hash map so here i have created one hash map object and here i have created two object for integer and have the same value 10 and 10 and object is i1 and i2 now i am going to add both objects into map so here i have using put method i1 current and i2 is rohit so now i will run this application then hash map will check the duplicate keys based on its dot equals method will be used internally so it will check if the content is same then it will override the previous object so now i will run this application run as java application so here the output is 10 and rohit because when i have added the same object with the same key i have added different object but the key was same then it was overridden and as we know identity hash map internally uses dot equal to equal to operator and dot equal to equal to operator meant for con reference comparison so here if i will use identity hash map then what will be the output now we can see both object will be printed because i1 is referencing to the different object and i2 is referencing to the different object and here we can see i1 is referencing to different object and out i2 is referencing to the different object and equal to equal to operator meant for reference comparison so here both keys will be added now i will run this application and here we can see the output 10 current 10 rohit when we was using hash map to check the identity of keys then it was returning the true because equals method meant for content comparison but when we are using identity hash map this was internally using equal to equal to operator and that is meant for reference comparison and these both objects are referencing to the different different objects so here it's returning false and we can see the output here and the next one is weak hash map and weak hash map it is exactly same as hash map except the following differences 
इन द केस ऑफ हैश मैप ऑब्जेक्ट is not eligible for garbage collector even though it does not have any external reference if it is associated with hash map then it will not able to destroy but in the case of weak hash map even though object is associated with weak hash map but it will be eligible for garbage collector if it does not have any external reference so let's create one program and we will see the difference there so here we can see the difference between hash map and weak hash map here we are using hash map and here i have created one object for hash map and here i have added one object that is map dot put and integer i1 here i have added and value is the current then i will print this map and after printing this object i have make this i1 is equal to null so here we can see i1 have no reference but now i will call system dot garbage collector but this object will not be eligible for garbage collection and again i will print this value then here we can see the output will be printed again same output will be printed two times so now i will run this application and here we can see the output now thread is sleeping for 10 5 seconds now after 5 seconds again the object is printed with same value but if we are using here weak hash map if i am using here weak hash map then what will be happen here now same integer i have created and same object i have added into map now i have make this object as null means this object has no reference so when i will call garbage collector the garbage collector will destroy this object that is map object so again i will run this application and here we will see the output now this time only one single time the object will be printed and after 5 second the empty object will be printed because this time the object is eligible for garbage collection because weak hash map object will be eligible for garbage collector if it does not have any external references or contain null value and now the next one is sorted map interface and if we want to represent a group of object as key value pairs according to some sorting order then we should go for sorted map and sorting should be done based on keys but not based on object values and these are the methods of sorted map that is object first key if we want to get the key of first object then we can use this object last key if we want to get the last key from the map object then we can use this function head like this we can use head map that will return the head object of the key and like this tail map and sub map the same function we have discussed in sorted set like same functionality they will perform here and the next one is navigable map navigable map it is a child interface of sorted map to define the several methods for navigation purpose and these are the methods of navigable map ceiling key that will return the lowest element from this element and the next one is higher key so this function will return the lowest element from this element and floor key is also return the highest element from the element and the next one is pole first enter it will use to remove and return the first element and pole last entry is used to return and remove the last entry from the map object and descending map is used to return the navigable set in reverse order it will return the map in reverse order now we will create one program and will use these all functions so here i will create one tree set object that is the implementation class for navigable map so here it will be tree map 
सो हेयर आई हैव क्रिएटेड द ऑब्जेक्ट फॉर ट्री मैप दैट इज द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन क्लास यूज फॉर नेविजेबल मैप एंड हेयर आई हैव एडिड फाइव ऑब्जेक्ट बी ए सी ई डी इट इज नॉट इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर बट वेन आई विल प्रिंट दिस ऑब्जेक्ट हेयर द आउटपुट विल बी इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर सो नाउ आई विल रन दिस एप्लीकेशन सो हेयर वी कैन सी द आउटपुट इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर फर्स्ट ए देन बी देन सी डी एंड ई नाउ आई विल यूज दिस ऑल फंक्शन नाउ हेयर आई हैव डिक्लेयर ऑल द फंक्शन ऑफ नेविजेबल मैप दैट इज सीलिंग की हाइयर की फ्लोर की लोअर की पोल फर्स्ट एंट्री पोल लास्ट एंट्री एंड डिसेंडिंग मैप नाउ आई विल रन दिस सो हेयर वी विल सी द आउटपुट run as java application and here we can see the output when we have used tm dot ceiling key i have entered the value c then its output was c and next the higher key was null because there is no element that is greater than e so here its output is null so here if i will use d then we will check it again and here we will use the same run as java application now output will be c and here we can see the ceiling key is c and the higher key is e because from d the higher key is e and the next one is floor key that is d so it's lower key and equal to key is d and the lower key from d is c and the tm dot pole first entry have removed the first from the map object so this one has removed that is a is equal to apple when we called this function and when we called last entry pole last entry then this element also removed so in the last when we printed the output so here we can see the map have only three values b c and d first entry and last entry removed by these both functions and descending map is used to reverse the map objects so here we have used all the functions of navigable map and now the next one is tree map in the tree map the underlying data structure is red black tree and the insertion order is not preserved in tree map and all the entries will be inserted according to some sorting order of keys that will be ascending or descending so if we are depending on default natural sorting order the keys should be homogeneous and comparable means should be same type of the object and should be comparable interface implemented by this class otherwise we will get exception and if we are defining our own sorting order by comparator then the keys need not be homogeneous and comparable because there are no restriction on values they can be heterogeneous and non comparable and duplicate keys are not allowed but values can be duplicated and here we, if we will see the null acceptance for the entry for the empty tree map as the first entry with null key is allowed but after inserting that entry if we are trying to insert any other object then we will get null pointer exception if our tree already contain few objects and we are going to add null value as a object then it will throw null pointer exception and in the values we can add any number of null values there are no restriction on values we can insert null in value but not in keys and these are the constructors of tree map tree map t is equal to new tree map that is zero parameterized tree map and the default natural sorting order will be provided by this constructor if we are using tree map t is equal to new tree map and comparator c then we can provide our own customized sorting order and third one is tree map map if we want to convert any map object into tree map then we can use this constructor and fourth one is sorted map if we want to convert sorted map into ascending or descending order then we can use this constructor now we will create two programs one for this constructor and second for this constructor that is used to provide customized sorting order and first one is 
यूज टू प्रोवाइड डिफॉल्ट नेचुरल शोर्टिंग ऑर्डर ओके लेट्स गो टू एक्लिप्स एंड क्लीन दिस here we have created tree map object and added three values now i will run this one so we can see the object will be in the sorting order that is a will be the first and b second and three b c will be the third place so it provides sorting order and the next we will check the null acceptance if i try to add tm dot put and here i will set the null value as a key then it will throw null pointer exception if i will use this one and i will run this now this will throw the null pointer exception so here we can see java dot lang null pointer exception because null is not inserted into tree map if key is not acceptable as a null value but if i will use value as a null then it is acceptable if i will run this now we can see it is acceptable value as null acceptable but key as null not acceptable it will throw null pointer exception and in tree map we can add only heterogeneous object homogeneous object if i will try to add heterogeneous means here we are adding string object if i will try to add integer integer so here it will throw compile time error and if i will remove this one from here and this is also from here and now it will not show compile time error but run time it will throw exception that is class cast exception because java dot length string cannot be cast to java dot length integer because it is accepting only string and as we know tree map is not supported to the heterogeneous object it support just homogeneous object means we can insert only same type of object if here is string then it should be string and every key should be string but here we are inserting 10 that is integer so it's throwing class cast exception because here it is also expecting the string value so if i will change it here from integer to string then it will not throw any exception now here we can see the object that we have used as a string as a key it was homogeneous and comparable comparable means string class implemented comparable interface and it providing default natural sorting order and if we want to provide our own customized sorting order then what we should do then we need to use second constructor that is tree map comparator c this constructor when we need to use if we want to provide own customized sorting order so now what we will do here we will use comparator now here i will create one class that is my comparator and we can give any name that will implements comparator interface comparator interface that is used to provide our own customized sorting order so here what we need to do add an implemented methods so here we need to override compare method so what we will do here here it will convert object 1 into true string because it will convert just only key of the object so here it will string s1 and next we need to convert o2 is also into string and here it will be o2 and s2 and here we need to return and return function will return the response by using s2 dot compare function here we will call and compare to function will be used to compare the two objects so here i will pass s1 and now what we need to do here we need to pass this object as a parameter of this constructor now i will run this and here we can provide our own customized sorting order 
run as java application and here we can see e was the first order and c in the second b means it was descending order and here we have used comparator to provide that customized sorting order and in customized sorting order what we did here we just reverse the original map object and now the next one is hash table the underlying data structure is hash table and the heterogeneous objects are allowed for both keys and values and insertion order is not preserved and order will be decided based on the hash code of the keys and null is not allowed for both keys and value if we will try to add null in keys or value anywhere then it will throw null pointer exception and duplicate keys are not allowed but values can be duplicated and all the methods inside hash table are synchronized so it is thread safe and these are the constructors of hash table first one is zero parameterized and the default size of is 11 so we can use an empty hash table with this default constructor and initial capacity of hash table will be 11 and the default fill ratio will be 75 percent and the second constructor is used to provide initial capacity by user and the third one is used to provide initial capacity with fill ratio of hash table object and the fourth one is used to convert any map object into hash table so let's go to eclipse and here we will create one program by using hash table so first we will remove this one and here we will create one hash table object and here i have added four objects now i will run this one run as java application and here we can see the output there is no ascending order that is default order decided by hash code key value so first is b apple a apple d apple then c the order was decided based on the hash code of the key so this was the order it was not ascending or descending order or not a customized order and if we will try to add null as a value in hash table then it will throw null pointer exception so here if i will try to add null as a value then it will throw exception that is null pointer exception so null is not possible in value or as a key it will throw always null pointer exception if you will try to add null and the next one is properties property is the child class of hash table and in case of properties both the keys and values should be string and in our program if anything which is changes frequently like database username database password and url so never recommend it to hard code these values in the java program for this we must need to use properties file because for every change we have to recompile rebuild redeploy the application and and these are time consuming process and if we are doing changes in just properties file then we just need to redeploy no need to rebuild recompile or just redeploy and run the application so the main advantage of this approach is if any change in the properties file then just redeployment is enough which is not a business impact to the client and this is the constructors for properties property p is equal to new properties and in case of properties both the keys and values should be string type and these are the methods of properties first one is get property here we will just pass the key of the property and it will return the value for this specific key and the second one is set property to set a new property and third one is enumeration property names that will be used to return property names and fourth one is void load 
and this will be used to load the properties file from properties into java properties object and the last one is store that is used to update properties from properties object into properties file okay let's create one program and we'll use this function okay let's go to eclipse and here we will remove this one and here i have created one properties file in source packet that is user dot properties and here i have defined three values one is equal to current two is equal to rohit and three is equal to mohit now i will go to my test class and here what i did here i have created object for properties class and here i am using file input stream to load the file so this is the path of my user dot properties file that i have defined here and the next one is used to load the file from it will load all the properties from our property file then i have printed all the properties value and next thing here i am using get property function to get the value for this key what will be the name for this key then it will print here so now i will run this application run as java application that is the all the properties from user dot property file and when i call this function p dot get property and pass the key as one then it is print the name for this key that is karan and that was about properties file and now we have completed each and everything okay now all topics we have covered inside map interface thanks for watching this video